In the previous chapter, we nested our section inside of our pages and our pages inside of our subjects. Because of the has many relationships between those resources, it made them easier to work with in our admin area. Nesting the resource routes allows us to capture those same has many relationships in our routing structure as well. In order to nest one resource inside of another in our routes, all we have to do is nest it. We just simply add the resources declaration inside of the do and end block of another resource. So resources subjects do, and then resources pages right inside of it. It's that easy. If we wanted to nest sections inside of pages, we would just add that inside the do and end block for pages. Now don't let the fact that it's simple to nest these resources fool you into thinking that it's not doing much for you. It's actually making some pretty big changes. We still get our regular routes that we're used to. So for example, for subjects, we would have subjects path as a get request that would take us to the index action. And subjects path with an ID as a get request would take us to the show action. But in addition to those regular routes for subjects, we would also get nested route helpers for our pages. Now that's a lot of text, so it may look complicated at first, but again, there's a logic to it that makes it easy to follow. For example, first notice that in the URL column that all of the URLs begin with the same thing, subjects slash and the subject ID. We're finding the subject ID first. It's the same as we had for our show action on our subjects page. So we're finding that subject, and then after that, the rest of the URL is exactly the same as what we would expect if we were looking at a non-nested route. Pages, pages new, pages, pages ID, and so on. All the HTTP verbs and actions are the same. And then notice that all the URL helpers are exactly like the URL helpers that we're familiar with, except that the word pages is prepended by subject underscore. So we have subject underscore pages path. We have new subject page path. The only difference there is the word subject. In the arguments to what we pass into the helper though, we have to always pass in the subject ID first. That's the first arguments. So every single one of those is going to take the subject ID. And then when necessary, it'll include the page ID as the second argument. Now it's not gonna be a problem for us to keep track of that subject ID. We're already doing that when we nested our pages earlier. Remember, we found the subject ID and we passed it around and maintained it all of the time. Our nested URL helpers are going to want us to do the same thing for the same reasons. Let's take a look at some of these in action. So for example, if we wanted to link to all pages, we would have already picked a subject. So we would ask for subject underscore pages underscore path and then pass in the subject ID that we'd picked. And then it would display a list of all the pages for that subject ID. Or if we wanted to see a particular page, we would have subject underscore page singular underscore path. And we would provide it both the subject ID and the page ID that we wanted to view. You can see the pattern and see how it's actually not that dissimilar from what we're used to. Then if we wanted to edit a page, we would just put edit in front of subject page path. It's the same as the show page, it's just got edit prepended in front of it. The key point here is we need to keep track of both the subject and the page here when they're nested. You'll notice though that we're starting to get some very long method names. And that's especially true when we start looking at sections. For example, if our sections were nested inside pages, which was nested inside subjects, then we would need to keep track of all three. To view all sections, we'd have subject underscore page underscore sections underscore path. We'd pass in two arguments to it. If we wanted to view a particular section, well, then we'd pass in three arguments because now we need to know the subject ID, the page ID, and the section ID that we're working with. You can see how that's starting to get long. And for that reason, three is really the limit that you should shoot for with your nesting. Two is ideal, three is allowable. Anything over that starts to be hard to manage.